Hey, Holy Trinity, it was our celebration week, the name of our congregation. We are named after the Holy Trinity. And so this last Sunday, we celebrated the name of the Holy Trinity. And that's what we're going to do today. Take a look at the Holy Trinity, at least what Paul has to say about it in the book of Romans chapter 5. But let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful once again for your many blessings that showered upon us. We continue to pray for your healing, for your peace to be upon us in the United States of America throughout this world. Your healing upon our bodies, your healing most importantly upon our relationships with one another, which still continue to be strained. And we just ask for your love and your peace to roll. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to read from the book of Romans chapter 5, and I love this lesson because you're going to hear, you may not at least initially hear, but I want you to listen for the naming of the Holy Trinity in this lesson. Now, who, the Holy Trinity. Let's start with this. What is the Holy Trinity? Well, we've got the Father. Does that mean God is a daddy, a male? And it doesn't mean that God is a male. But the word Father does imply the one who gives us life. And that's certainly the way that uh, the Father was thought of uh, in, the, in the Old Testament times and certainly in the times of Jesus. The one who gives us life. This is God. But we are not done yet. Um, we have Jesus. Who in the world is Jesus? Jesus wasn't just a nice guy in our Christian theology. Jesus is God. That doesn't make sense. How can we have a father? How can we have Jesus? Are there like two different gods? Oh, I'm not done. We have the Holy Spirit. Um, so you're telling me we have three gods in Christianity? No, there's only one God. I've often told folks, and this is not a completely accurate or uh, description, because if you take this too far, it actually can be very heretical. We as a Christian church believe there's a distinction between these. But um, we, so I want you to be careful because what I'm going to say could be confused with a heresy called modalism. But let me tell it to you anyway, because I think it's a good starting point. Just realize that God is bigger than our understanding. We think of God like this. God is this big, as far as the east is from the west. And we could never accurately describe God. And so what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about God as a starting point, but it's going to put God in a little box, which could be confused with a, uh, a heresy called modalism, where we think God is just, there's one God, and sometimes God is a father, sometimes God is a spirit, sometimes God is, a, is Jesus. Well, it's a little more complex than that. God could be all of those things at the same time. So I don't want you to think of that. But imagine for a minute you come up to me and I'm Pastor Dave. To you. I'm Coach Jones to the kids at my track team. I'm Dave or Honey to my wife on a good day. Uh, I can be all three of those things at the same time. I can be Dad, too. I'm Dad. And you better believe that I have a different relationship with a person who calls me dad than I do with a woman who calls me honey. I've got a different relationship with a person who calls me Pastor Dave than the person who calls me Coach Jones. Oh, I'm much harder on those kids who call me Coach Jones. That's my vicious time in life. Not true. Uh, nevertheless, I can be dad, Pastor Dave, honey, Coach Jones, all at the same time, but there's also a distinction between these four different characters. That's, in one sense, modalism, just saying, well, I'm the same person who just acts in different ways. So it's kind of like that. That's a good starting point for that. But we don't want to confuse you and say that that's just the way God is. God just acts in these different ways. There is a distinction. God can be Father and Son, and Holy Spirit. You want to know why? All at the same time? Because God isn't like us. God isn't limited like us. God is bigger than us. But nevertheless, it is one God. So let's take a look at Romans chapter 5 and see what it has to say. What Paul is telling us about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, 
We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. So we got the big concept. Oh, how do we do this? God. This is the big concept. God. This totality. What does God want? God wants to justify us. In other words, God wants to put us in right relationship. We have done everything we possibly can to break relationship with God. And God is doing everything possible to reconcile that relationship. You know, it's like that disobedient kid who goes out of his or her way to push their parents away, but the father just keeps coming, is relentless. Honey, I don't care what you've done. I will always love you. I will always love you. I will always love you. I am here for you. Just relentless in hopes that that child might be reconciled and won over. That's what Jesus Christ did. On behalf, on behalf of God. So again, on behalf of the totality. So this part of God brought peace, the Bible says. We have peace with God. Ooh, we got peace. I don't know. What do we do with that peace? That's what we need, right, in this country. We have peace. I know, I'm a really terrible artist. I apologize. We now have peace with God through Jesus Christ. So we're already told the God, the big concept, we want our relationship, God wants our relationship reconciled. We are a right relationship. Jesus is the one sent by God that brought us peace. He's the one that did it. So now we've seen God, big God, God the Father, who created us, wants peace with us. So Jesus... Again, part of God came to bring us peace, and that's what was done on the cross. Oh, we're not done. Through him we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of sharing the glory of God. We haven't done anything to deserve that. But we stand with great confidence because of this Jesus. We can be at peace. We don't have to run around like crazy trying to earn God's kingdom. It's a free gift. We stand and the glory of God because of what Jesus has done for us. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I don't like that. Can I rip that out of the Bible? <sighs> this is verse 3. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings. Who in the heck can rejoice in their sufferings? Oh, hang on to that. Knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint. You know, it's like that... Uh, that old phrase, you know, I, I ask God for patience, and God has given me plenty of opportunities to test and try my patience. Oh, my gosh. I've had plenty of opportunity to practice these things. Why in the world would we rejoice in sufferings? It's, yay, somebody's bashing me over the head. Thank you, Jesus. No, that's not what we're talking about here. We know that we're just going to suffer. Everybody suffers in this world. The good people suffer in this world, bad people suffer in this world. It's a part of living in this world. Some people suffer more than others. We happen to be at the top of the food chain. We suffer a whole lot less. And when I say we, I mean me. But there are an awful lot, I probably suffer a lot less than 95% of the people in this world. Folks who are going through suffering... That isn't a gift of God. It's part of the nature of this sinful, broken world. But why then would we rejoice? Because we know that no matter what suffering we are going through, loss of a loved one, terrible tragedies, racism, bigotries that are going on right now, uh, this COVID-19 with which we as a world are struggling with, we know no matter how tightly those screws get screwed into to this world and to each one of us, God promises to sustain us. We stand in his glory. No matter how difficult things get, this is this life. This is the eternity that God has made for us. So God will get us through. I rejoice, not because I'm suffering, I rejoice that it's only this long and God will deliver me. That's actually very hopeful, I hope, because we're going through a tough time right now. Oh, it goes on. Hope does not disappoint us. 
Why? Because hope is based upon God. Now, if your hope is placed in another person, you may be disappointed. Uh, let me use an example of this. You know, this last week, a couple of weeks, on ESPN, there was a show about Lance Armstrong. And, you know, many people were bought into the myth of Lance Armstrong. He came back from cancer and he won uh, the Tour de France. He ended up winning seven times. And all Americans, pair Americans who couldn't care less about bicycling prior to that, were like, we're nuts about it. And then, of course, came the great big disgrace. Well, he was a uh, drug cheat the entire time. And it was really disappointing. It's like, I put my hope that we finally had a great American bicycles. You're putting your hope in the wrong things if you're disappointed by this. See, a human being. He really blew it. He treated people like garbage as a result of this. People who would confront him. But he's a human being. We're putting our hope in the wrong things. Maybe you're putting your hope in your government. That's a bad thing to do. Your government's going to disappoint you. I don't care if you're a right winger or a left winger. You vote in a, a Democratic Party, a Republican Party, they're all going to disappoint you. Doesn't matter. But he finishes with this. Hope does not disappoint because it's who? It's in God. God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. Hi there. I got somebody coming in while we're filming, and so we're saying hi as she's coming in. I'm just finishing up our Bible study tonight. So welcome. I'll be done in a second. And then, uh, so God poured out into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit was given to us. So now we see the third person of this Holy Trinity, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Our hope is built upon what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is given to us so that we might be sustained in these days. Our weariness, through our times of weariness, our heartache, our pain, and our joy restored. I'm offering this as a hope to you today. You better trust, you can trust, that God is with you in all three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bringing you peace and reconciliation to God and sustaining you through the difficult challenges of life. Let us pray. Holy Father, bless us this day. Give us peace. Sustain us with your Holy Spirit in these difficult, challenging times. We thank you for reconciling us. We know that we can stand upon your gift of Jesus Christ. We know that we can celebrate in glory with our God in heaven because of your love for us. We give thanks for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's peace be with you. Amen.